Hey guys, I'm back. It's been a while. And I just want to say how thankful I am to those of you who stuck around waiting for me to rebound and come back. You know, sometimes life throws curveballs at you and just when you think you're making progress, something unexpected happens and suddenly everything feels out of control. For me, the last couple of months have been chaotic. We experienced a loss in family and just when things started to look better again, we ended up with no water in the house. Because we live outside of town and we have our own water supply, like a water well, which gave out. It was very old and that meant no water for a whole week. Then we had to drill a new well, redo the plumbing from the well to the house, dig up half of the yard. You know, this was a huge expensive repair. And of course, in the grand scheme of things, it's not the worst thing that could happen. But it was just another blow when I was already stretched thin. Meanwhile, life didn't pause. My research, my classes and everything else kept going and I needed to keep going too, at least in some capacity. But something had to give and unfortunately this was YouTube, at least temporarily. But I'm back and in this video I would like to share what I have managed to accomplish meanwhile because even when things get tough we still need to keep going. And this isn't about complaining or looking for pity. It's about acknowledging that setbacks happen and we have to find ways to push through, adapt and come out stronger. Today I will briefly talk about three things. So first of all, my paper, I finally submitted it. Um, second, a new GPU program I wrote, it's a huge personal milestone. And lastly, a little bit about the coursework for this semester. So let's get into it. The biggest milestone is that I finally finished writing my paper and I submitted it for review last week. But first I uploaded the preprint version to Archive. Why? Because publishing in a journal can take a long time. Reviews, revisions, more reviews, you get the idea. Posting on a preprint service makes the work accessible early and also locks in the priority of discovery. Then I created a GitHub repository for my simulation code and uploaded everything that belongs to the simulation part uh, there, including a very detailed explanation of how the code works, what it does, and why it might be better than other similar programs. After that, I registered an account with a publisher, double-checked the submission guidelines, made sure my text files are in a good order and actually compile without errors. And I'm using TechShop on my MacBook. Um, I'm not using Overleaf. Uh, there is a reason for that. And if anyone is interested, I can make a video about the whole process of publishing a manuscript or submitting a manuscript to the publisher. Now, fingers crossed that my manuscript passes the first check by the editor and will be approved for further review because that's the first hurdle for any submission to a journal uh, that needs to be over overcome. And then afterwards, a round of reviews will follow, which is a second stage. But for now, I'm just holding my breath that it will even get to that second stage. Now, second point I mentioned is my GPU program. One of the reasons why it took me so long to finish that paper, because I was perfecting my GPU accelerated simulation framework or simulation program for artificial spinach systems using low level CUDA kernel programming. And I even gave it a cute name, Replica Sim. And if you're interested, you can find it on GitHub. Just if you're curious how it looks and what it does. This still speeds up data collection significantly compared to other CPU-based programs or even to some GPU-based code that does a similar calculation that my program is doing. But more importantly, it helped me to conquer my fear of the GPU kernel programming. So once upon a time, I was thinking that CUDA was this impenetrable wall. Turns out it's way less scary if you take it one step at a time. And now I'm excited to create more videos on scientific computing and high performance computing or HPC because some of you have asked for this in the comments of my recent videos. And lastly, a few words on the coursework for this semester. So this term I took two classes. So it was classical electrodynamics at graduate level and experimental nuclear imaging of magnetic materials. The electromagnetism class has been going well overall. The homework assignments tend to be on the long side but they were much more manageable than the class I took last term on mathematical physics, which sometimes felt like existential crisis to me. Uh, but 
I still managed to get a B in that class. It was just um, a lot of work. So, and I have a final exam for this class in a week from now, and then one more homework set to finish. Now, for the second class, the evaluation is based on two presentations and one report. Each of these three things needs to cover in detail one of the imaging techniques that we discussed in class. Overall, this class was less time consuming than electromagnetism, but it was quite interesting to learn about all those fancy nuclear imaging techniques. Though, to be honest, to me, they all sound somewhat similar, perhaps because they're still based on the same physics, but uh, it's just slight tweaks that in one or the other that differentiate them and the use cases are therefore different. You know, without having any experimental hands-on work, it's really difficult to remember all the ins and outs, know by heart what each of them is for. It's like remembering all the Marvel movies in order Impressive, but not easy. Now, what's next? In about three weeks, I'll be done with my coursework for this semester, and the summer term, I will focus only on my PhD project. So that will give me a little more time to work also on the YouTube channel content and film more videos for you guys. So if you have any specific topics in mind that you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll see what is it that is in the scope of my knowledge where I could make some videos that will be worthwhile watching. And if you made it this far, you're a real one. Thank you for your patience and support, and I'll see you in the next one.